Hi, I'm Kim Nishihara, exhibit designer at Pavlovania Museum. Although the museum has been closed, staff have been busy preparing for you to return. We have spent lots of time making sure our exhibits are safe for you and your family. This time has caused us to stop and think about all the objects, buttons, and surfaces we touch in the museum and how we can find creative solutions to still make these available to you without sacrificing safety. We've also been doing a lot of programs and events through videos such as this one. Although the videos have been fun and again a challenge for museum staff in good ways, we are sure ready for you to come back to the museum in person. One project that I'm truly excited to tell you about at Public Grounding Museum is our new gallery. When you visited us before, you know that we have our main gallery and one changing gallery. Also, we have a theater showing a film. That film is still on view in the main gallery. We moved it there so that now we have another changing exhibit gallery. Welcome to our new community gallery. Let's take a look. As you can see, the gallery is newly painted and still in the renovation. After 20 years, it needed some freshening up. We need to clean up the carpets, add baseboards, and work on the lighting. But this is the new gallery at the museum. We're extremely excited about this gallery as it opens up a space for showcasing community artists, budding artists, quick turnaround shows, and collaborative exhibits. You will be able to see one to two new exhibits a year in this gallery. When we open this fall, you will be able to see our new show, which is part of the nationwide celebration of the 19th Amendment and 100 year anniversary of when women won the right to vote. However, the 19th Amendment did not give all women the right to vote. Native American women continued and still continue even to this day fighting for access to voting and voting rights. We must remember this and so that is the story that we're telling. Pablo Grande's new fall exhibit is called Rights and Resilience Celebrating Learn more about this history when you visit the museum. But I do want to note one important fact here. This was 72 years ago and still counting. Just this year, in 2020, the House of Representatives and the Senate began discussions on the Voting Rights Advancement Act to restore federal oversight of the local voting rules and practices, an act that would impact many people, including you. Rights and Resilience Celebrating Native American Women is an exhibition devoted solely to Native American women who fight for their people, their place, and their heritage. They are leaders in government, protectors of environmental and human rights, keepers of tradition, innovators and change makers, entrepreneurs, scientists, advocates, and educators. Despite warfare, cultural assimilation, and persecution, these resilient women inspire fresh perspectives and thoughtful conversations and embody continuity. Centered around themes of adaptability, perseverance, and transformation, the exhibit will feature ethnographic objects and several powerful artworks from contemporary artists. One of the artists in the exhibit, Kim Seasnim Oberzet, will showcase her beautiful bronze sculptures. She has been casting bronze for over 35 years Kim is one of the first Hopis to work in bronze as an art medium and one of the first American Indian women to work in bronze, which is historically a male-dominated field of art. Kim has graciously shared her, this video with us as a sneak peek at her beautiful female sculptures. Take a look. This is the Mother's Gift Bronze Sculpture by Kim Siesnam Overzet. 
She is 16 and a half inches high by 10 inches wide by eight inches deep. Corn is the heart of the Hopi diet and has provided the Hopi with life for over a millennium. We understand that this is a sacred gift from our mother, Mother Earth. In Hopi life, the growing of corn is an arduous task which requires dry farming skills, continuous hard work, and a lot of prayer. Our corn is grown in less than nine inches of annual rainfall and dry washes. The Hopi people sustain the corn and the corn sustains the Hopi culture. Every living thing has a spirit, even insects, which also are given to us by our mother. Having a deep understanding of the natural cycles of the earth, the butterfly is celebrated not only for its beauty that brings happiness to the people, but also for its important contribution in pollinating plant life. The Hopi thought is one mind, one body, and one spirit. museum we have so much to see both indoors and outdoors. Another project that we'll be getting started on now that the weather has cooled a bit is the native crop garden. To get us started Native Seed Search donated seeds for Pueblo Grande Museum's garden. Thanks Native Seed Search. The museum received corn, two varieties of squash, sunflowers, melons, cotton, gourds, chilt beans, amaranth, and beans. Plans are in the works for sprucing up the garden structure and planting the seeds in October. The garden is a modern illustration that will demonstrate irrigation techniques, crops, and pest control like those used by the Otham and their ancestors. Look at these photos of the growing garden. That's what we'll be growing here. If you have a green thumb and you'd like to get involved in the garden or in exhibits, let us know. Whether a visitor or a volunteer, there are many reasons to enjoy Pueblo Grande Museum and many opportunities to be involved. We hope to see you soon and hear from you sooner. <laughs>